How's it going everyone? AFC Finners here back in Bristol. Today we are seeing Chipping Sodbury as they play our friends Clanfield 85 who we saw a few weeks ago. Sadly Chipping Sodbury are in the relegation zone but maybe they can swing a positive result today. But yeah they're coming in nice and early. It's a freezing cold January Saturday afternoon but well, I like this already. I like these old-fashioned pebble dash buildings but yeah should be a good day have been nice and welcoming so far we're just gonna have a bit of fun in the club bar we've got maidstone against ipswich on the screen big fa cup tie let's have a look inside <laughs> Tom Scott, the last pin match. How very selfish of him. How much was it, Tom? Four quid. Yeah. Well, and look, Mates so don't take the lead against him, so it's upset on the cards. Right, so here we are. We're on the 0% Copperberg. Stride journey continues. Go. There's a stands and little <laughs> little bomb shelter. There we are then. These out. Oh my dance name. I feel like I need a dance name. Is it upside down? Yes. The curly sleeve. That's how I've I've used that before, but that's one. <laughs> Did you know that Finley Stanley is 16? Six. That's six. Nice little bit of bite to eat here. That nice cheese roll. I like it when doors are thick enough to be a doorstop. Only two quid. Thank you very much. There we go. We've got FA Cup. No sorry for drinks. Tom. Good day so far. I've been a very welcoming chat. We've got to speak to the Clanfield 85 manager as well. I also saw them recently and he was <laughs> reminiscing about all the arguments they got in with the manager, but we thanked him for them winning 4-0. As you know, that was nearly a very boring game. So good on him for turning it round. About an hour before kickoff, let's enjoy ourselves. Well, we've just enjoyed Maidstone against Ipswich in the club bar. Congratulations to Maidstone, an incredible victory. So, we're about to go to our seats, but before we do, let's find out a bit about today's host, Chipping Sodbury. Chipping Sodbury Town were founded in 1885 and joined Division 1 North, the Bristol and District League, in 1898. They would go between several different leagues and playing friendlies for the next few decades and fold in 1954. However, they were reformed in 1959 by a man named Cliff Phelps and joined the Dursley and Wooten League. They fell down the divisions of this league system, but in the late 70s and early 80s, they turned things around and ended up in the senior division of the Bristol and District League. The 1990s saw further success as the club were promoted to a Bristol Premier combination of Division 1 and they would win promotion to a Premier Division in 2000. They went back and forth between divisions throughout the 2000s and in 2008 won the Premier Division, achieving promotion to the Gloucestershire County League. In 2015, they were promoted to the Western League and would win Division 1 at their first attempt to enter the Premier Division. They were transferred to the Premier Division of the Hellenic League in 2021 and were relegated in 2023. Overall, they've won one Western League Division 1 title, one Bristol Premier Combination Division 1 title, one Bristol Premier Combination Division 2 title, one Bristol Premier Combination Premier Cup, one Bristol and Suburban League Division 1 title, and one Bristol and Suburban League Division 2 title. So those are our hosts, Chipping Sodbury Town. Let's see what it's like to enjoy a game inside their home, the Ridings. Midway through the first half, it's been quite physical. No hugely significant chances yet. We're scared to see we 0-0, but last time we saw Clanfield, it was 0-0 at half-time. They ended up winning 4-0, so I'm quietly confident there'll be a goal at some point. But yeah, someone's going to score a big Clanfield, but I think Jimmy Sobby have done quite well considering their position in the league. Yeah, yeah. Still 0-0. Well, I won't lie, that was a garbage first half, but again, like I said, last time I saw Clanfield, it was 
this case and finish 4 0. So far, something like that again, but very little to talk about. Let's hope it's about second half, eh, Tom? Let's go inside a bit. I'm a bit chilly. Second half's begun. I missed the start of it because I was getting us hot chocolate each. Two quid for this. We need it on this cold day. <laughs> well, literally seconds after Tom said this is going to finish 0 0, isn't it? Cranfield have repeated the trick and they've opened the scoring. It was looped through. I told them to score over a kick. They didn't listen to me, but a number 10 has slid in. 1 0. It's not a 0 0. There's to that. Right now, number 5! What's he do? Kicked it. It's all kicked off. Apparently, a chipping Sobby player has elbowed the player on the floor. He's got sent off. I'll keep filming because I feel like there might be another red. Number five just kicked him, Lino! Which player did five kick? Um, number, I think number five for Chipping Sobbery. Oh, I was looking at number five for um, Planfield. <laughs> He's got away with fucking bird in there. It's madness. Like Harry for the traitor. Yeah, but what was Harry thinking? Let him no, literally, bring... remember the fight you stood by the referee now. They were kicking off, kicking off, and he literally went up to one of their players and just went, like, fucking get away from me. Wow. He got away with that. <laughs> it's a funny old game. Two red cards in the matter of the moment. The chipping Sobby right back has been sent off for that kick. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Down to nine men. The Clanfield's going to run away with it again. Gosh, non-league is crazy. Well, fair play, Tom. I did not, as Arsene Wenger would say, I did not see that, so fair play. Get, you get you in Scotland Yard. That's it. <laughs> yeah, in. Banfield doubled their lead. Number 10 was played through and he's tucked to be on the keeper. Just what they deserved. It was coming. It was on the way. And that should be the three points. Signed, sealed and delivered. But can they get more? 2-0. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, up. Ooh. So, it really wasn't the best game, but at least he got two goals and two red cards out of here. Very physical once again, just like last time we saw Clanfields, but it was definitely the better team that won. And best of luck to Clanfields and hope you can seal the title that you're currently chasing so that's non-league one for the weekend tomorrow we're doing another fa cup one we head to watford as they take southampton keep an eye on that coming out later this week so Maldo, thank you for taking me down here we're gonna head home but first let us rate the experience so we will start off with the welcome and I must speak very highly of the volunteers who were there. As soon as we came in, the guy working at the ticket booth was incredibly friendly, chatted to us, told us all about the club, asked where we come from, and the people working inside the bar were really friendly as well, and you can tell how much work they put in behind the scenes to make the club what it is. And it's a good club bar as well, the fact they have a darts board and a good way to watch TV together is good, you can really feel the strong community vibe in that bar. Sadly, the welcome did take a bit of a hit in the second half of the game because like they were a minority, but it did affect the experience of fans who basically, during that red card incident, the ref came over and explained to the Chipping Sobbery manager why he'd given a red and the manager was sort of saying, oh, why didn't you give a red for that? And he was like, look, I didn't see that. If that happens, I apologise. It was a really good ref. I have my issues with refs, but I give credit where it's due. But like there was a left back for Sodbury who was like going in really dangerous challenges and they were telling Eliza off for flagging. It's like, well, no, that's just because it's your team. They're clearly fouls and they're really getting at him and it kind of made us a bit uncomfortable. So I think the attitude of some fans did side the welcome a bit, but no, overall, they don't try and make out. It's more than it is. You can tell they appreciate ground hoppers. So I think the staff we spoke to, I really enjoyed their company and their very good and without people like them these clubs wouldn't exist they are the beating heart of non-league someone also came over and asked about my badges on my jacket and it turned out it was a chipping sobri manager i didn't even realize so again only non-league that can happen sale points with some toxicity amongst the sobri fans but apart from that really good staff who made you feel at home so i'll probably give the welcome a seven out of ten food and drink 
it wasn't anything groundbreaking, but it did the job it needed to. There was a good variety of rolls because obviously you had those sausage rolls, so there was hot food available, but also for me, veggie option, cheese roll, can't really complain about that. One thing I would say is there was that little tuck shop. They did like hot chocolates and stuff. And they had a cup of soup, but they only had a meat one. I would recommend just getting a vegetable soup one. Everyone likes vegetable soup and it's a very cheap thing. It just meant I had to have a hot chocolate, but the food and drink does the job it needs to. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's not making out that it is either. So you know you stand the food and drink and there's a decent array of options. So I'll probably give it a six out of 10. Stadium, to be honest, it's hardly the best ground I've been to and I'm not expecting Anfield or Old Trafford when I go to these games but I've been to a lot of grounds at this level that are better. I think the inside the club bar is good it just needs to be bigger it was quite cramped and around the stadium it did feel a bit minimalistic like where we were there was a fence and there were people who stood behind it to watch the game we did see that and there's very very little separation from the outside world like there was a climbing frame outside big field next to it you just felt very little separation like behind us there was just this public park and a scout hut a lot of non-league clubs we went to at least had some separation and we had a look inside the seated stands and to be honest i thought they were very poor too because obviously if you're a senior citizen or you're disabled going to a game those would be the only options where you can sit but when you did sit down you couldn't see the pitch properly because if you turn left there was the side of the stands which meant some of it was blocked off which usually was the goal and like there is this little standing area but i think you they really need to improve their seated areas because the the view from them was very poor and some people might not have a choice but to sit there so i i know it's not an easy task but i think the stands need to improve and you maybe need another one on one of the other sides just to balance things out and give it a degree of separation from the outside world. The club bar itself inside was designed well. Funnily enough, it was a bit like Clanfield, what they lacked in the stadium they made up for in a decent club bar. But again, I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of developing the stands, making making the club bar a little bit bigger. I don't know, it's not easy, but hopefully if that is something that needs to be done, comply for grants or bring the community together, do a crowdfunder. But I think a lot of work needs to be done to make this stadium more attractive to grants toppers so i'm afraid i'll give the stadium a two out of ten whilst it seems harsh any staff members chipping sodbury i just hope you know this is to help you improve i, I don't have any spite towards you because i necessarily like the quality of the stadium I, that's just my opinion that's a ground hopper on how you can improve and finally value for money i think this was something that was really good it was um six quid to get in four quid for a pin badge but i think it should be three quid personally but it's only a quid everything else was quite reasonably priced it was you know two quid for a roll two quid for a chocolate yeah there wasn't anything price wise that i felt was unreasonable so i think overall whilst they're probably spent about 20 quid and again i've spent more than that on just the ticket for other games for the level you're going to it doesn't cheat you out of anything it's reasonably priced for the level it's at and you know what you're getting so they definitely thought their prices through reasonably and i think they do a good job of this so i'll give the value for money a 9 out of 10. so that was chipping sodbury i personally won't be in a rush to go back and i don't mean that as an insult to the club it's just my opinion but that doesn't mean i wouldn't recommend the ground hoppers checking it out you still do get a good welcome it's always nice to tick new places off and hopefully things can improve for chipping sodbury and turn your fortunes around in the league and thank you for hosting us and the people that did chat to us it is nice to feel appreciated as a ground hopper and i wish your club all the best in the future thank you chipping sodbury for a fun day all the best Thank you all for watching. I've been AFC Finners. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can see the link in the description. You can support me for only £1 a month and doing so will help days like this happen. Let me know if you've been to Chipping Sobri, what you thought and what grounds you'd like me to check out next. I've been AFC Finners. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Stick with us as we go ground to ground. AFC Finners out.